It's 2021. It's time for a new update. What do you think? Have you recently been into a tutorial about the Palfish app in your classroom and it looks different and you're not quite sure what's going on? Here's an update of an in-classroom tutorial of how you can move around, find those stars, when they work and when they don't work, and how to add in a picture if you need to add one during class. Hi! For a regular class, when you first enter, you'll see this message. The student can't see this one. So when you arrow to the right, this page will go away. This is reminding us to smile, be energetic, and wear professional and suitable blue tops. Keep your camera at eye level and teach at least 25 minutes before saying goodbye so you get paid. So let's take a look at the controls. When we first enter, we will see what level we are teaching, what unit we are on, and what lesson. Level, unit, lesson. There are 10 lessons in each unit. There are nine units in the Palfish official classes. There is also the beginners class, which is separate. So we always have a greeting page. On the lower levels, there will be a song to sing and we can drag our circle into the screen to sing hello and greet the student. This student is on a higher level, so there's no singing, but we can practice conversation. Remember, if you don't know what to say, TG is your teacher guide that helps you understand what you need to say or some examples. You don't have to be exact, it's a guide. Then we have a look at, on the higher levels, we have a phonics page, but usually it goes straight into the classroom song. Each unit, those 10 lessons, has the same song. Occasionally for the science lesson, number nine, there will be a different song. So this one we can sing here with the student, sing and act. If the student doesn't want to sing, that's okay, they can just listen. So we can, sometimes we drag our circle into the page, <laughs> sometimes it's a different size, that's totally fine. And when the student's in the classroom, we can drag the student's video too. So here's a good example, when the student's not in class, when we tap on the student's avatar here, down the bottom, if they didn't arrive to class yet, you can send them a reminder. Remind the student to come to class. When they're in class, of course, that won't be active. But when you touch the student's avatar, when the student is in the classroom, you will have other options such as allowing the student to re-enter if the internet connection is not good for them. You can turn off the pen function, which is great for scribblers. <laughs> you can also turn off the, it's called the function. So when there's slides that you need to drag on, let's have a look if there's a dragging slide in this lesson. Okay, so this one here, this is a dragging slide. If the student is dragging like crazy, or when there's the spinning wheel page, if they're just being crazy, you click the student's avatar and down the bottom here, you'll see an option to, I forget the wording, I'll put a picture here, disable the student's function. So that will help there. So also to show the controls up here, this one here is to reset the page. So I've dragged the iguana here. When I press the reset page, this will reset everything on the page and start again. When you see a page that has the star rating, you cannot move from this page if I try to, when the student's in the classroom. It won't let you move until you give them a star rating for this page. So you can click it when they're not in class, which is great for your lesson preparations. So these controls over here, when you're on a phone, they will be under your picture. And when you're on an iPad, they will be over to the side. They're exactly the same. So the timer function, I don't use this very often, but when the student's in class, so have a look at the, the message down here. It says it's invalid when the student is offline. But when you're in class, sometimes a student likes to have a race. Uh, so you can put the timer on and there's three settings you can choose for getting them to read fast or find something. You can have a race together if they're on a higher level. So this, when we draw on the screen, so this is our pen, we can click on it to change colors. We can choose any color. So say we want pink, 
when I draw on the screen, if I want to clean the board, I click on the broom tool, clean the board. This one here with the little picture icon is showing you all of the slides in this lesson. So if we wanted to jump to a page or go back to show the students something, we can just click on with the arrow and choose the page that we need. So this is also where you bring up the whiteboard. You just click straight here and the whiteboard goes over the top of whichever is the active slide. So when you lift or right arrow, this page will go away. It won't save what has been drawn or written there. Sometimes I like to take a screenshot. If you're on an iPad, you can set up to have a one-touch iPad screenshot and I like to keep a copy of that. And sometimes if it's a cool drawing or something they need to work on, I'll send it to them after class. And then we have the magnification tool. So when we click on that, see how it goes from gray to white? These two buttons, the pen and the, the zoom in function are a toggle. You can have either or, they don't work at the same time. So if you're zooming in, so let's say I drew a hello and I want to zoom in. So I will, it won't let me zoom in. See, I'm just going to draw on the screen. So when I click on the toggle to change it to the zoom in, now I can pinch the screen, pinch the screen, just like you do on a phone or a tablet, and it will allow me to zoom in. But I can't draw because it's currently on the zoom in tool. So if we want to draw again, we need to click back to the pen. I could draw a little heart, something like that. And then if we want to zoom out, we need to click back on that zoom tool and then we could pinch in and it will zoom out again. So I hope that helps. Down the bottom here, we have the stars. The stars don't work unless the student's in class. If we press it, just like in your interview, it will say student is offline. This is the chat box. Not many of the kids know about it. I don't encourage it because some of the kids get a little crazy. They send you pictures. They're typing just nothing, which is a waste of time. But on some of the older kids' classes, it's really helpful because I can type in a word or a sentence. They can translate it directly in the class. And then if they want to tell me something and they're just not quite sure, they haven't learned the vocabulary yet, they can type a sentence and I can translate it as well. So let's see if we can do an example. Hello, we'll put Davis because that's who I'll be seeing. Hello Davis, press send and if I click and hold this will give me the option to translate but obviously I don't need to translate. If you haven't yet translated before you'll need to change that in your settings. It might pop up there to ask you to do it there. And then this one is where you do the face filters. This one, the little smiley face. If you click on there and you can choose a filter. So if I want to be a cat, I'll put myself up here so I can be a cat. This is really great for taking cute selfies in class if you want to add these to your profile. So we can change that to, there are two different monkeys. There's the big monkey, oh, some of the kids don't like it. And then there's the little monkey, like a mask. Uh, this is good for the apples and bananas class pears and grapes. If you have that PF1 that has the grapes, there's an older one that has apple, banana, grapes. I have this on YouTube if you need an example. A lot of the kids think that, okay, so this one clearly is an alligator or a crocodile, which we learn in the higher levels. But this one with the open face, some of the kids seem to think it's a dinosaur. So, or maybe it's this one. I don't know. And I'm, I just go with it. Whatever they think it is, I go with it. So this one, to me, it looks like a bear. But most of the kids think it's a big dog. So whatever the kids like, I'll do that. So that's pretty fun. You can have a, a bit of fun with the kids. If the kids don't like the filters, you don't have to use them. You can just turn it off. In the trial lessons, some of them will come on automatically. You can go in there and turn it off if the student doesn't like it. So I hope that's been helpful to give you an example of how you can move around in the class. And again, with the TG down here, if you want to know what to say, you can open it again. When you first go to a slide, so let's go over here, it will zoom along the bottom of the screen. So if you haven't seen a class, you can just slowly read it. So we should protect them. Okay, so I'm reading the TG down the bottom. But if you want to see all of it, you click on the TG button and it will open all of it. 
but if it's in the way on the screen, you can click it and it will minimize. It's still there if you need to open it again. How to add in a picture to the classroom. Let's go over to the controls to the picture icon. When you click on it, you can see all of the slides for this class and the whiteboard. But look up here, local. Anything that's saved on your device that you are currently on, you can access your camera roll right from here and you can add in. I keep a certain amount of pictures right at the bottom. So if I want to tell them something, I might ask them, where are you from? And I will add in this picture. Where are you from? And I'll ask them to circle what province in China they are from. It's great for building rapport with a new student. To get out of the slide, this is like a temporary slide over the top of whichever slide is current. You just arrow left or right and it will go away. If you found this video helpful, give it a thumbs up and send it to a friend who also might want to know how to navigate around their classroom. Consider subscribing and hitting the bell to be notified of the next video about teaching, traveling and tech tutorials.